So I wanted to start with you as the writer, producer, and director of The Road to Galenia. Can you share the genesis of this story? So um, this is a story that um, I had thought about for a long time about how to, how to tell the story, this notion that you know, people uh, carry hopes and dreams with them and oftentimes they'll carry them their whole lives and never speak of them out loud. And, um, and then I thought, wouldn't it be harder if you, had, uh, if you had this chance to pursue your dream, but to do it, you had to give up all the trappings of success. Um, and so I had been out on the Eastern shore uh, on a uh, trip with one of my sons and on the drive across the Eastern shore, all of this beautiful landscape, um, the stories just sort of came to me in the, uh, on that drive and I sort of built it from there. But um, it's a story that I hope that, you know, everyone can see a little bit of themselves in that story. People keep asking me if it's autobiographical <laughs> and uh, I, um, and, you know, I, I think everyone hopefully is going to be able to see a little bit of themselves in it. Ben, Amy, and Will, at the center of this story is the friendship between your three characters. How were you all able to build that bond while filming during a pandemic? Luckily, these guys are really cool, so it wasn't very hard at all. You know? <laughs> uh, I think, I don't know, I speak from my experience, but it was effortless great actors and great people to be around. So it was pretty easy. Yeah, I think we all got along really quickly. I think it also helps that we were all living on pretty much what felt like camp. Um, and so we just spent all of our time together. We were all in this little bubble. And yeah, I mean, I had a, I had a great time working with these, these two. Uh, and I felt like we really, yeah, we really created a fun little friendship, especially on set. It felt like camp. Like that's the best way to like everybody's always like oh set felt like camp this one legitimately felt like camp. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know Joe set a really you know wonderful tone and you know beyond even camp, um, it was really you know especially shooting during a pandemic on the Eastern Shore it became very much like a family kind of environment um, when everybody sort of you know shooting together and you have a closed set and. Um, all of those kind of things and you know these guys are all wonderful and um yeah it just was really i think important and i think it shows up on screen of sort of that um that those relationships and and those um just ties to each other it definitely does and you know we follow your characters through this 20-year journey and how the choices they've made in life have shaped the person that they are today uh, for Ben, Amy, and Will, what is your preparation like as you begin to develop your character and show the evolution as time passes by? For me, it just starts with the script and making sure I'm, you know, we, like, luckily we had Joe, you know, and you don't get that with all directors, but we had this rehearsal process and lots of meetings and stuff to just make sure we were all on the same page. And I think that's like so helpful. Um, but yeah, I think you start there and if you get that stuff down, the rest of it's pretty easy to work out once you get with the rest of the production team and get to talk through ideas and all that stuff. And by the time you're shooting it, it's, it, it feels pretty easy. Yeah. A question for the group, but there's a, a beautiful line within the film about the dreams that don't go away. And once you realize them, you can't help but get out of its way. For each of you, when did you dis discover that you wanted to be a storyteller and that the arts was your calling? Joe, do you want to kick us off? Well, I've always had an interest in telling stories. Um, I like telling stories generally, uh, and I have um, I've liked writing stories and uh, and shooting them. So this has been a sort of a lifelong interest of mine, um, and uh, this has been a, it was a real gift to be able to have a chance to get this story out, which was a personal, you know, one that I'd been carrying for a long time, and, and it was a gift to be able to get it out uh, with such a wonderful cast and and crew to to bring this story to life at a time where I, I feel like, you know, it's a message that people need to hear, you know, at this sort of unique time in the world. So uh, it was a real gift for me. I, uh, I was young. Thankfully, um, I started doing theater probably when I was like five or six and fell in love with the idea of playing something that wasn't me on stage. And I still love stage. But when I realized really what I was doing, I was obviously not five. I was, you know, I was probably in middle school when I realized I loved the idea of storytelling, but I thankfully had a little bit of a, a head start in being able to have fun with it from five, six, seven, eight, nine onward. Um, 
but probably around middle school is when I realized I loved storytelling. I loved the idea of telling stories, whether it was on stage or on camera, um, writing, acting, everything that's encompassed with the idea of what storytelling is. Um, I, that's, yeah, probably around sixth, seventh grade. Yeah, um, probably, yeah. I mean, I was pretty, pretty young. Um, I was, you know, lucky enough to have grown up in LA. Um, both my parents, though, my mom was a hygienist. My dad was uh, a chemical engineer, so <laughs> not in the industry at all. Um, but um, I really, um, I loved, I love Lucy. That was like, she was like the be all end all and like the TV show and um, Lucille Ball was just something about her. And I don't think I really understood um, exactly what she did, but just the way that um, how captivating she was and, and storytelling. And I started, you know, doing some like commercials and, um, and then it just, you know, had built on that over, over the years and the further I've gotten in my career and the older um, I've become the medium that I use for storytelling is mm. changing and evolving from being on camera to writing and directing and, and um, really just um, taking it on as a, as a whole. Oh yeah, mine's easy. I was 16 and all the pretty girls were in theater, so. <laughs> <laughs> Then I liked it. There you go. Uh, question for, for Ben. There's a moment when your character confronts his father and explains that living up to um, his expectation has had on him. And you brought so much conviction with that scene in particular. As an actor, how did you prepare for that? I think it was a lot of looking inward and and the desperation that is coming out of him. Obviously, talks with Joe and help from Joe. I remember that day on set was um frustrating just because it's a lot it's it's a long scene it's a heavy scene um but going off of what will said earlier the 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 preparation that we were all able to have within just rehearsing prior and having conversations prior and trusting that what joe had written was exactly what needed to be said and having joe there kind of guiding you along all of those aspects really helped bring that scene um, to life. Uh, and so at the end of the day, it was just trusting Joe, um, in the, in the early processes during rehearsal and, and having conversations about that scene and having conversations with Jay as well, who played my father. Um, he and I talked a lot about that scene and stayed up late the night prior, kind of dissecting it and going over it. And, um, it was great. That was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That scene was a, was a, um, that was a, there was just a lot of great collaboration in that scene. You know, uh, Ben had great insights into, you know, the emotion of the, of the moment. Uh, Jay Sanders was awesome. He had, he had a, uh, some really interesting insights into, into uh, where his character was in that moment uh, from a mindset perspective and the weight that he was bringing uh, that was sort of unspoken to that point, like the weight of his burden that he was bringing to the scene. It was, um, that was a great, um, it's a, it, it, you know, they, they performed it beautifully, but it was the result of a lot of collaboration there. And then, Amy, like you were saying earlier, in addition to the work that you've done on screen, you've gotten into writing and directing. How has your work, your experience behind the camera, now affected the way that you approach your work on screen and vice versa? Oh, gosh. It's definitely, um, it changes the way I even watch television or movies. And I think about shop setups and I think about, camera lenses and I think about uh, production value and and really like okay well you know if you cut out of that or if you you know what's the sort of transition piece or where would I have ended it or oh that's a really interesting take on something um, I think that I've been very lucky to have grown up um, working on a television set and all of those you know years and hours uh, spent between setups just asking questions and working with people who have been so open and giving and um, have informed my um, education in that way um, have really given me sort of a different perspective on on um, on film and TV. Great answer. And then, well, similar to, to Ben's character, uh, your character is somebody that is trying to provide for his family. And there's a heartbreaking moment towards the end of the, the, the film, which might give me any spoilers, but how did you prepare for that? And what was kind of the decompression after filming? 
Oh, man, I don't know. Preparation for that, you just try to come in on your toes and 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 lean on your uh your your director and your and your cameraman sound you know you got a lot of people around you in a very emotionally charged environment so you're very you know it's we had such a good crew uh ad it's huge in a scene like that you know so you just got like people looking out for you and then afterwards you know you smoke a couple cigarettes and have a beer and call it a day uh, so this is your feature film debut as a writer and director. Did anything surprise you about the experience? What's been the biggest takeaway that you're going to apply to future projects? I'm, I'm hoping that my next one will not be uh, will will not have such a COVID uh, sort of overhang to it because uh, that definitely added a lot. Um, honestly, from from my first feature film, I could not have asked for a better experience. Um, the the um, it was just a remarkably collaborative group and um, everybody enjoyed each other's company. Everyone respected each other. Uh, um, you know, there's a lot, of course, anytime you go through something like this for the first time, there's a lot of technical things that I learned that will be helpful in the next, in the next go around. But um, for me, I think this, this was just a, um, it was a really, it was a terrific experience, motivates me to, to move on quickly to the next one. And, um, and it's, it was, it, I mean, we, we ended up with a really beautiful film uh, and it's the result of the hard work of every single person on that crew. Um, every single person on, the, on that crew had their part in, uh, in telling the story as did everyone in post and, and the cast. So I, I take uh, um, great pride in uh, collaboration. And I think that we, uh, we deliver our best when everybody has a chance to do what they do really well, and, uh, and we were just blessed with a really wonderfully talented uh, group of folks. Well said. And then Ben, Amy, and Will, you've all worked on projects of all sizes. What is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as creatives? I, I love the freedom of it. I love that, you know, it's kind of a scrappy crew, it tends to be, and, and people who are really passionate about a project. Um, and I think that there's just so much more freedom in storytelling and nuance and characters that you don't necessarily get when it's a higher, you know, a bigger um, production or if it's meant for a very specific audience or distribution. Um, but I think that there's something just so beautiful about independent filmmaking. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I completely agree with Amy. I think uh, everybody that shows up, you tend to find on indies that they have, everybody wants to be there. There's a heart there. There's a, everybody's there because they want to make a story as opposed to it's just a paycheck on something that might be on a larger scale. And I don't know, I find working on indies, you, you find people who really love storytelling rather than people who just want to make a movie for the sake of making a movie. Um, so I've always really appreciated that about, about indie filmmaking. Yeah, you're on the same level too. You know, as an actor, I think you get treated like you're the bee's knees sometimes on the really big productions. And, and it's nice to like do the movies where you're just, everyone's on the same level in terms of, you know, their investment in the project. You're just all there working to make a good movie. This is a question to the group. There's so many moments that are going to stay with audiences after they see the film. Is there one in particular that you're really excited for fans to see when it drops on July 8th? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, there's a moment in the carnival scene <laughs> where I was trying to get a high five and, and Amy just dusted me, you know? <laughs> Look for that little Easter egg in there if you want. I love that answer. Yeah, so. uh, I think um, there's so many great scenes in the whole movie and, you know, Amy and, and Ben and, and Will each have really special moments uh, throughout the whole whole picture. I do love the um, uh, the best man scene. Um, I've, I've always uh, I've always enjoyed that scene and it was a uh, um, so, you know, among among the many really great moments in the story. Um, I thought that was, uh, I think that's one that, that hopefully uh, audiences will enjoy. I, obviously I, I, I'm just gonna go with the, the scene between me and Jay. That's a scene that I'm excited for people to watch. Um, just, yeah, I love working with Jay and I think that scene really turned out nice. So that one 
without any spoilers. Um, I think for me, not having grown up in Maryland and um, being, I guess, four generations removed from, you know, growing up on a farm on both sides of my family, um, so many of the visuals and the, and the big wide drone shots um, that uh, Joe and Clark were able to pull off just transport you into this other world that um, is just so captivating and, and beautiful and stunning and really goes to, to showcase um, kind of what life is like there and, and the beauty in that lifestyle. Thank you.